Hello everyone, welcome to Life with Gwen and Joe. I just thought I'd spend a few minutes uh, and chime in with y'all and uh, talk about a few things that are going on in our world today. Obviously everybody's aware that uh, we have this coronavirus scare and um, right now is a time that we need to exercise compassion for our fellow, our fellow man. There's a lot of challenges going on with, with uh, the workplace, with uh, people's finances possibly, with the family situations and just fear in general. I think everybody's a little bit anxious about this scenario. So don't forget to ask God to come into your families, come into your job scenarios and, and heal those things. We, we're praying for our leaders right now. There's a big challenge going on in Washington to deal with all this stuff. And um, we're facing a lot of potential um, uh, non-truths versus real truths and we're having to, to decipher what's what's real and what's not there's a lot of stuff being put out on the internet you know that the businesses are losing a tremendous amount of revenue through this and, and this is bound to affect our economy so we really want to pray about those things there's a lot of things going on in Washington these pe people are having to make big decisions about about our our economy obviously people are paying attention to the stock market how it's dropped and there's a huge plunge in the numbers so we want to pray about that. I think one of the biggest things that I see as an opportunity here is that we're all being challenged, not only personally, as families, as communities, but we're being challenged as a nation. This is our opportunity to not let this scenario overwhelm us, to drive us into, into fear, exercise compassion, kindness, and love. We're gonna to pray together, we're gonna to stay together, and we're gonna use this opportunity to make ourselves even, even stronger. So in the aftermath, coming out the backside of this thing, we're gonna be better off for it. Um, we're being challenged right now. We need to go to God with these things in prayer. Pray, pray personally, pray with your family and your friends, and we'll get through this. I wanna talk about what Jesus had to say. Matthew 24, verse four, Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Christ and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Now, the media and the things coming through the airwaves, those people, their, their, their programming is kind of predicated upon and dependent upon their ratings and their demographics. So oftentimes they can embellish things or kind of um, certain things can be given to hyperbole and we want to be able to decipher those things and kind of make proper decision based on the information that we're getting. So I want to invite you to um, visit the You Can Overcome show that Gwen had the other night at our church, at the Remnant Church, with a very, very well-respected, prominent surgeon there named Otis Rickman, and he was on the show. Uh, it is in the link in the description. The episode is called What They're Not Telling You about the coronavirus and it might be able to clear up some of the questions that you have, some of the things that you're wondering about and uh, maybe help diffuse some of the fear that you have of what's going on. The coronavirus uh, is a family of viruses that the one that you all know the most is the common cold. And uh, so uh, the thing that's, uh, and it's, this, this virus has been around as, uh, you know, I mean, God put it here you know, millions of years ago, uh, I would imagine. Uh, and, um, and so humans have been in contact with this virus, uh, you know, as long as we've been around. And so uh, then what happens is, is that uh, the more that you're exposed to the virus as a human, then you build up immunity. Uh, and so, and then everybody around you builds up immunity. And so, you know, the person that's sitting in the middle of the audience right there, even if they weren't immune, all the other people around them were immune. And so it protects you, it's called herd immunity. It protects you from getting, uh, from getting infected. Whereas the common cold is more like a sneeze or airborne, not that coronavirus could not be that, but it was more uh, touching the keypads, touching, you know, with right. hands. That's why I jokingly asked if this had been so wiped it, that's down. That's why we're doing this uh, Right here, uh, whenever no we uh, came up here. So, uh, but it is, so it's, uh, uh, again, doctors like to use big words, it's called fomites. And so what fomites uh, are, that's your hands, your fingers, your surfaces. Uh, so it is droplets. So if somebody like sneezed in your face and it got in your eyes or on your nose, uh, then uh, you could get it. Uh, but 
they also, if they had wiped their nose and had it on the microphone, and then I had it on my hand, and then I wiped my eyes, mm -hmm. then I would get it. Um, so it's, uh, so that's really how it spread. And that's the other thing that you'll see uh, is uh, the isolation. And so if you're, even if somebody sneezes right at you, it's not going to get to you. And so that's why you, you need to, you need a, you need a you buffer need zone. And so, but if you do that, I mean, it's, it's if you wash your hands for 20 seconds, make a conscious effort not to touch your face, right. you know, hold your, uh, you know, hold your, you know, hands and fist or stick them in your pocket and avoid shaking hands, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You decrease your risk of actually getting this, you know, probably by 80, 90 percent. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, that's like the n numero uno thing. And then the other thing is, is that as a human being, individual, we care about other people, especially in this church, is that if you're sick or you've been around somebody who's been sick, stay stay home. home. I mean, it's biblical. We, stay we, home. We, we, put it, we put it out every so. year during flu season is that, you know, if somebody was sick, in the, I mean, you've told us this for years. They would take them outside the camp. Oh, and then they would have to stay there. Then the, the priest would have to examine them after seven days. And then if they still saw any signs of something, they'd send them back. And then so it'd be a 14-day, thus courting. It wasn't, it wasn't started with uh, the United States or Europe. It's definitely uh, a, something Jewish. And, and God gave it to them uh, 4,000 years, right. yeah, centuries ago. Yeah, that's amazing. So carry some hand sanitizer around with you. Uh, whenever you're shaking hands, uh, Gwen and I demonstrated it, you know, this. So if you've come into the office uh, to see me this week or last week, you'll see me rubbing my hands with alcohol solution. And then uh, we uh, handshake by elbows. And, uh, and so it's just one of those things that you can do. Things that you can do at your house or your workplace is if you have alcohol wipes or, um, uh, you know, Clorox kills it on contact. So wipe your doorknobs off, wipe your surfaces off. Uh, your mouse pad, uh, your phones, uh, phones are nasty. Um, and so, you know, just to kind of keep, keep stuff, you know, clean and, and hygienic. Uh, and it's just stuff that we've been taught. Quarantine and the, the Jewish people used it was very biblical and for us to abide by that would be a very good thing. Yeah, just to reiterate, I mean, you can stop this thing in its tracks by three things, which is washing your hands, not touching your face, uh, isolate yourself when you're sick, and you don't travel, you don't move around. And so those three things prevent the spread. So if it can't get out, your body is going to kill it. You know, it will kill it, and then it can't jump to somebody else. And it runs its course, and then after two weeks, you're not infectious anymore, and then you can go back, you know, out and about your normal thing. So it's, I mean, and we've been doing that, you know, uh, you know, washing, I mean, that's, it's all biblical. I mean, about, uh, you know, the cleanliness and, you know, hand washing, uh, isolation. Um, and um, uh, so uh, it's nothing new, as you said. Again, Jesus said, do not be deceived. There will be wars and rumors of wars. And certainly if there's rumors of wars and things like that, there can be rumors of pretty much anything else going on in the secular world. So um, don't be deceived. Go to God with these things. We are praying for you guys, and we're so thankful that you're here with us. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. God bless you. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell so you are notified when we have a new video.